Hey guys, before we get started, we have an anime channel called Mystic Sage, where I do a ton of anime speculations, character studies, and a whole bunch of content anime related, such as Boruto, My Hero Academia, and Dragon Ball Super. So if that's up your alley, go check out Mystic Sage. A link to our anime channel will be in the description and in the top right corner of the screen with the video we did this week. Also, if you guys want to support me even further, you can check out my Patreon page, it has a lot of really cool perks you may like. That money can go a long way and can increase the amount of content I put out, being able to more so afford my editor and buy more equipment for making our channel even greater. Thanks guys, enjoy the video. I think a lot of us as Pokemon fans have always wondered what it would be like if Pokemon were real and how much fun it would be if they were. Let's say Pokemon were real though, and we were in a world full of Pokemon trainers, professors, gym leaders, elite trainers, and everyone who practically had a Pokemon based career. Everyone would have Pokemon one way or the other for the purposes of their job. Let's say for example though, you were a Pokemon trainer, and you could choose any Pokemon you wanted to be on your team of six. What Pokemon would they be? Well. For me, they would be a combination of Pokemon I like and Pokemon that I simply wish more people would appreciate and recognize for how special and unique they are. Today, I'm going to spotlight some of these special Pokemon to me and create the team of six I would bring if Pokemon were real or if I were brought to the Pokemon world itself. I know I did a video similar to this a few years back with the Pokemon team tag, but things changed and we have a new generation of Pokemon being generation seven. I also have found new love for some Pokemon that I never used to like. So without any further ado, let's get started and showcase these special Pokemon. For any typical Pokemon trainer, it is ideal for them to obtain a starter Pokemon as their first friend. Except in my case, my starter won't be any of the Pokemon that Pokemon professors give. Instead, my Pokemon would be an Eevee that I found in the rural areas of my neighborhood, abandoned, and eventually I would raise it into an Umbreon because, duh, it's my favorite Pokemon and my mascot. Umbreon, ever since I was a kid, has just had the persona of being cool. I mean, it's a black fox with red eyes. What boy that's seven years old wouldn't think that's cool? How I saw Umbreon originally was through my neighbor. She had an Umbreon in her game, and I wanted it bad. I never officially got one though until I was around 12 years old, and I evolved it in my Emerald copy through trading for my Fire Red copy, and then evolving in my Emerald copy at night. It's a lot of, a lot of copies, I know. What makes me really love Umbreon is the personal symbolism it's had for me in my life. I've had some unfortunate stuff happen to me over my life, but how Umbreon's golden rings light up, they always remind me that there is a light at the end of every dark tunnel. I will always love Umbreon, and if there was an actual chance for me to have Umbreon on my team, I would definitely take it. This next Pokemon is actually my favorite starter Pokemon of all time being Chikorita. I always loved Chikorita in the Pokemon anime, and it was actually my first ever Pokemon that I count because in Pokemon Red, I didn't know what I was doing. Chikorita has always been one of the cutest Pokemon of all time for me, and I always loved the way how it adored Ash in the anime. I adore everything Chikorita has. The attitude, the fact that it smells amazing, and it's because it's the first Pokemon I ever had, being the first game I ever had was Pokemon Silver. Oh yeah, I'm not evolving it neither. It's staying at Chikorita. Ash can do with Bulbasaur and Squirtle, I can do it with Chikorita. And Ash has a couple other Pokemon he hasn't evolved neither, so yeah. If I were to pick a place to find Chikorita to, it would be a cherry blossom garden in Japan where I'm on a nice long vacation. That sounds like the life to me. Cuteness aside now, we're getting into something more majestic and powerful, and a Pokemon that fits that criteria is Kingdra. My love for Kingdra came from the Pokemon 3 movie where Misty and Molly went at it. Molly uses a Kingdra in this battle, and the theme that played during this fight was epic, as it's currently playing right now. Claire's Kingdra also inspired me to love it and capture one for myself. That thing gave me the hardest time as a kid because of its typing of water and dragon. It's such an amazing typing combination, being only weak to dragon and fairy. If I missed any, my bad. I'm sorry. On top of that, Dragon is also my favorite typing. If I were to pick a location to find Horsey at, it would probably be on the beach. Injured. Poor baby. This next Pokemon is going to be one of the Pokemon that no one really appreciates, but I do, and that Pokemon is Dustox. Eww, Mystic, why would you want that ugly moth on your team? No, it's it's not ugly, it's beautiful, and it's super fun to use because I've gotten a sweep with it, and it survived in my Emerald Nuzlocke, so take that. Also, I'm the guy to release moths if they fly into my house. Moths are beautiful, and so are Wurmples. That's why I would raise a Wurmple all the way into a Dustox. Jesse's Dustox also helped me realize how cute it was after it bid for to her to meet with the shiny dust talks to love the most. It showed me that Pokemon people think are ugly can love too, and I love dust talks. Welcome to the team, buddy. 
The fifth Pokemon on my team is going to be Gardevoir. Let's just scratch any strange Gardevoir thoughts aside. I, I know what you're capable of, Internet. Don't you dare do it. What draws me to Gardevoir are its Pokedex entries. It would initially sacrifice itself to protect its trainer, and to me, that's amazing. These are practically the same qualities as a mom, and Gardevoir reminds me of my mom, more or less, especially Gardevoir Shiny. My mom's favorite color is also blue. Shiny Gardevoir is also blue. You guys are starting to see the similarities. How I would receive Gardevoir would be from my mom, actually. After she found an egg on the ground, and hatch into a shiny Ralts. I would then raise it myself and eventually mega evolve with it too. Around the neighborhood I live in, I hear birds a lot, like literally every second. I hear birds, especially early morning. But because Pokemon are real in this world, I would want Talonflame on my team. The birds around my area remind me of Fletchling, constantly chirping. Secondly, with me using a Talonflame on my team as of recent in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon, I want one in real life now. Who needs a Charizard when I can fly on Talonflame everywhere I go? I would be Link from Skyward Sword, flying on my Loftwing practically. Well, those are the Pokemon I would have on my team if Pokemon were real. These Pokemon are all very special and dear to me and would make great friends for me as I travel the new world of Pokemon. What kind of Pokemon would you guys have though? Show yours in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you like anime content as well, be sure to also check out Mystic Sage in the iCard or in the description below. With that being said though, I'm gonna wrap it up here. I'm Mystic Umbreon and I will see you next time for some more awesome Pokemon content.